everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you a really great recipe for how to grill a whole turkey on a spit. This is going on my barbecue and uh, it's going to be a birthday celebration. It's Christmas in July, that's what I'm theming it today and it's going to be my birthday this weekend. So this is going to allow me to cook today and eat on this tomorrow for my birthday so I don't have to cook, okay? Beautiful. So we're having some interesting twists on winter recipes or Christmas recipes and this is one of them. So I'm going to do a basic um, bird on the barbecue for you on my rotisserie. So I, if you're, yours doesn't have rotisserie, I'm sorry, you can do it in a different way but not this way. This is, uh, one of, this is the spit and it's going to go right on the barbecue and it's got a little motor and it turns it and you have two clamps here, two hands claws that go into each side of your whatever you're roasting okay and then it goes on the spin so that's that now I have a bird this is an 11.64 pound bird or something like that so this is going to take um, 11 to 13 minutes per pound of turkey on the grill and you're going to close the lid and let the rotisserie do its work okay uh, so this is how we're going to get started I'm going to get just a little bit of peanut oil on my hands maybe a tablespoon to work with and this bird has been rinsed and it's dry right now so the oil will stick to it and that's what you need for crispy skin you don't want any moisture between the grease or the oil and the skin of the bird now you could use butter for this if you want to but hey you don't have to and I don't want it to burn on the barbecue so I'm going to use peanut oil today because that has a nice high smoke point now I want just enough oil to coat it and you probably could get away with not coating it at all because there's quite a bit of fat in turkey skin and it's going to render and keep everything nice and moist and juicy and give you beautiful crispy skin. But I'm just gonna help it along a tiny, tiny bit. Now I am going to season this very basically. I have salt. You wanna get all over this bird. I'm gonna do one side and then the other. Pepper. A little bit of poultry seasoning. So I'm using a sweet smoked paprika today. This is from La Chinata. Make sure you check out our uh, review of this. This is their premium uh, blend of sweet smoked paprika, okay? So here it is, and check them out online at lachinata.com. So I'm just gonna take a little teaspoon here, and I'm gonna just very lightly dust this guy. Oh, it's gonna be smoky and delicious. Beautiful. There's nothing like smoky barbecue. Now I've never done a turkey for my birthday, but why not? We only do them for Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. Come on, this is a celebration too. So I thought I'd just think of things a little bit differently this year. All right, so I'm going to season inside of the cavity just the same with the same spices. You want flavor from the inside out as well. If you would like to stuff him, I'm sure you probably could. I'm not doing that today. Or you could just opt to put a lemon in there or, and some spices and things like that. And I'm going to flip him over and do the same thing. Now this is a utility turkey. So it actually is missing a little bit. If you've never used a utility turkey or don't know what that means, that just means a turkey that's um, not quite perfect when it comes to the store. So it might be missing a part, it, something might just be wrong, or maybe the skin is slit um, from butchering them and you won't have a beautiful turkey so they don't sell it um, as expensive. So the utility turkeys are often much cheaper per pound and uh, it's a good bang for your buck and no big deal, right? A little bit of poultry seasoning. So if you don't really care, then that's a good way to go and have turkey more often. Sweet smoked paprika. Woo, we're going all out today. All right, all right. So I'm going to attempt to trust this turkey uh, just because I want to keep things close together while it's on the rotisserie. I don't need the legs and the wings like hitting the bottom, right? I don't want them burning either. So I want to keep things together so that everything kind of cooks more evenly as well. So I should have probably done this before I oiled it, but that's okay. We're going to get it done anyway. Now, you're going to take some twine, okay, or some string. This is butcher's uh, string. And I'm going to take the center, right? Under here, you might find a neck bone or a little flap of skin that you can get it 
to stay underneath, okay? So that's right in the middle. You're going to take this and you're going to put it around those wings because you want those to stay in. You also want to try and get the wing tips to stay in by the way you are putting that string over, okay? So we're gonna bring it down here by the legs. I am missing one drummy, so we're just going to do what we can. Try and keep that wing in. There we go. So you wanna try and hold your string nice and tight the whole while you're going. So I'm gonna bring this right underneath this tailbone. Bring it up, include the legs, since I'd only have one leg, I only need to tie it around one leg, so it shouldn't be too hard. And we're going to make a double knot. I don't need to go around twice if I don't want to. There we go. So that should hold everything together, okay? A little bit better. So now you can see she's, he's all kind of together now, okay? If you had another uh, leg there, you're going to want to crisscross the legs like this, and then you're going to tie them. And you're gonna probably go around twice, but I don't need to do that because I only have one leg. All right, so this guy is ready. I need to get him clamped in and on this rotisserie. In the meantime, I'm preheating my grill on a nice medium heat. And I also have some wood chips and they've been soaking in water for some time. We're gonna make a little pouch and we're gonna smoke that uh, into the barbecue while the turkey is going. I also have some beautiful charcoal um, pellets that are Jack Daniels whiskey infused and uh, that's going to be tasty too. So we're going to put that all together. Okay, so grab your spit and grab one of the clamps. Okay, and you're going to take it and feed that onto your rotisserie. Make sure it has a little screw here to tighten things. So unscrew it to get it on. Get that where you think you're going to want it, how big your turkey will be. You might need to adjust it after you uh, get it on here. So let's make this things easy. You're going to feed it right through the, the uh, cavity on the inside, okay? So, so what's gonna keep this um, spinning is this rotisserie clamp, right? So we really need to get that into as many spots as you can that are going to hold this turkey. Now, my dilemma is that I'm missing a leg and that would really help me in this instance, but that's okay. We're still going to make it work. So get that into the turkey as best you can. Feed that through and make sure it's punctured. All right, so I'm gonna sit this turkey on its end and that's gonna help me get this in here a little bit better and line things up so I can actually see. And then we'll move him down. All right, now you're gonna do the same with the other side. Make sure your clamps are facing in like that. The forks, the claws. What do you call those, Mom? I would call them claws. Claws. <laughs> All right, get as many of those skewers to puncture your turkey as possible because that's when it's going to keep things turning on that rotisserie, that it's grabbing onto it. You're going to have to work with it a little bit, push it on there. You want to really secure it. That's very important. All right, so move your turkey to the middle and really tighten the clamp on one side so he doesn't move. You're going to take a mallet. Well, I take a mallet that flattens meat, you know, when you're doing um, Parmesan, veal Parmesan and chicken Parmesan and stuff. So I'm going to just take that and I'm just going to tap these little skewer ends into the turkey. You might get lucky and hit a couple bones so that it really stays in there. And that worked really well. Now tighten that side as tight as you possibly can. I'm going to loosen this side a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. That's just a little trick I have for you. Now tighten that clamp. All right, let's move this turkey out of the way so I can get these pouches created. We'll get everything on the grill in a second. Turkey's ready. Now I've got these wood chips that I've been soaking. I'm going to make myself a pouch out of aluminum foil. Make sure it's big enough and heavy duty enough that it's not going to just burn right through immediately. All right? There we go. So I'm going to as assemble my wood chips in the middle. We're going to fold it up like a burrito and that's going to help season our turkey with smoke. 
You want them to be um, wet as well so that they kind of steam too. All right, so fold that over, fold it over. You want to secure it. So bring them to the edges together and roll those so that they are sealed completely. Oh, you might have a little spot where the um, foil breaks and that's okay because that's where the smoke is going to escape. So just don't make too many more holes. Just make a few holes in the top for that smoke to escape and that packet's ready. I'm also preparing another packet that I'm going to put on uh, a little bit later. Make yourself another pouch. These are smoke flavoring. These are grill pellets and they're pretty interesting. This is what they look like. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so you don't even need to soak those. Just gonna put those in the center. We're also going to make another pouch. With these ones, I'm only going to poke one hole on one side. That's all these ones need. If you have your favorite way of um, smoking, go ahead. Fold that up. I'll make that the bottom. And we'll poke one hole in the top. Boom, that's it. So I'm gonna put the one packet on now and I'm going to put the smoke on halfway through the cooking. I'm thinking this is going to take just under three hours or so to uh, cook through for my size turkey. And I'll meet you outside. All right, what a beautiful day. And this is gonna be a fantastic dinner. So we've got the grill on, it's preheated, and we've gotta get this thing on here, okay? So go for the gusto. So typically these motors have a little um, bracket here that you can slide onto the side of the little hickory. And there you go, okay? So slide that onto here now. And we're going to feed this with history in the holder and feed it into the motor as well, okay? So now that's nice and secured. All right, so the moment of truth, we're gonna turn it on. And voila, we have rotisserie turkey going on here. I'm actually going to move my turkey over a little bit now that I can see him a little bit better where he's located. Loosen up those clamps a bit. And just slide him over. Now is the only time you're going to be able to do that because it's going to be extremely hot in a hot second. So I'm going to use my silicone gloves for this. And you might even need to keep checking that it's nice and secure. So rotisserie is underway, and this is going to take roughly three hours to complete. So I guess we'll see you periodically throughout. You're going to check on it and make sure things aren't burning or anything like that. Um, and we're going to close this guy up so he can do what he's got to do. Ah, and I can't forget my first wood chip smoke pot. That's going to go directly on the heat over one of the burners. And that's going to do a beautiful job at helping flavor this beautiful grilled turkey on such a wonderful day. Christmas in July. Close it up. We can even do our turkey that way for Christmas. Mm -hmm. We could definitely do it for, for Christmas this way, especially if you want to brave the elements and be adventurous. It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. See you soon. All right, I'm putting an ugly barbecue drip pan underneath uh, just on where the turkey is going to lose its juices. Uh, they might burn up or you might have some extra juices that you can use at the end. But nonetheless, you don't want it just going all into your barbecue like that. I did take the grill grates out so there would be much more room here for a large turkey to accommodate it. So I'm going to keep the outside elements on and the inside one I'm going to leave off. So the middle one, okay, right under the turkey. So it's gonna get a lot of heat and it's gonna really get a chance to uh, brown up and it's going to baste itself. The fats are gonna render and the juices and it's just gonna keep everything beautifully moist and tender. Can't wait. All right, so our uh, rotisserie turkey on the barbecue on the spit is still out there. It started raining about an hour ago. It's been on there for about two and a half hours now. We have about 30 more minutes to go. We're making all of our side dishes and things like that. Make sure you check out our recipe for Santa Claus melon smoothies. They are awesome. You're gonna love them. Um, and I guess you'll see me in about 30 minutes. Uh, when I take that thing off. I didn't want to take the camera outside in the rain. So hopefully it'll stop raining in the next little while to help us all out. All right, see you in a minute. All right, it stopped raining a little bit. Look at this absolutely glorious bird. It is beautifully browned and um, moist. 
you can see that there's some drippings, but they tend to um, burn on the in the drip pan, and that's okay. You're probably not going to be able to make gravy from it. That's all right. Look at this amazing turkey. It looks phenomenal. The temperature um, stayed about 325 to 330 the entire time we've been cooking, and I'm going to put the last leg of the pellets on here, the charcoal pellets, just to give a little bit more smoky flavor. Put that directly on the flame with the whole side up, and this turkey is nearly done. Uh, you want to wiggle these joints and see if they're loose. They have a little bit more to go, just a tiny bit, maybe another 30 minutes or so. Amazing. I can't wait. What a great birthday dinner. Close it back up. And I'm going to use my Alpha Griller digital thermometer to see what the temperature is. Now I want to try and get it into the thickest part of the thigh. That's going to give me the best reading. Um, and I'm. what's really cool about this is that it has the readings for the temperatures you're basically looking for for poultry, ground meat, excluding poultry, fish, uh, and beef, and things like that. So that's very, very handy. I am doing the turkey, so we're looking at the poultry. So turn it on. It will tear its own self and it's 73.6 degrees out right now. It's just finished raining. Let's wait till it comes back around one more time. Now I'm looking for roughly 160. It needs to go up to 165, and when you take it off of the heat, it's going to tend to rise in heat as you're letting it rest before you cut it. So I'm only looking to get it to 165. Now I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm going to stick this right through the thigh. You don't wanna stick it right in through the cavity though. It's going to give me an instant reading and then you can press hold. Good stuff. It holds my temperature. It's exactly what I want. The holding um, function works amazingly well and it holds your temperature right there for you so that you can still see it after you remove it. Um, other thermometers will tend to really dramatically um, decrease in temperature after you release it if you are um, can't see what it is. So then you press the hold button and you can take it out and then you know exactly what it was. A little bit longer to go. All right, moment of truth. I put my digital thermometer in and it came up to 160. Our bird looks amazing. It's dark out, and that's okay. I love eating late at night. It's my birthday, I get to do whatever I wanna do. So my the turkey is gorgeous. It is browned beautifully. It smells unbelievable. The smoky flavor, the wood chips, and those um, charcoal pellets. Wow, what a great job they did. So I have a clean cookie sheet. I turn off my rotisserie at this point. Make sure you're using gloves because this is going to be hot as all get out. This is going to have to sit for a little while before you even attempt to try and get it off of this rotisserie. But I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to be brave. So here we go. Look at this turkey. <laughs> Birthday. All right. I'm gonna close this up, turn off your barbecue. It's done good work today. It smells unbelievable. So good, I can't wait to dive into this. Let me show you a little better. Look at that. I'll show you what it looks like inside, but boy, I'm excited. All right, so let me put my gloves on in case I accidentally touch this spit. It's very, very hot. Please don't burn yourself. Don't try and take this turkey off of here yet. You want it to rest before you mess with anything that's going to be taken out or cut, okay? So this is what it looks like. It smells like heaven. It is so smoky. It is so savory smelling, unreal. You can really smell those wood chips and the charcoal smoke. So we need to let this rest. All the juices in here are ferocious right now. You wanna make sure that it fits. They kind of cool and calm down just a little bit so that they are, um, it makes it easier for, to cut this turkey and keep it nice and moist. You've worked very hard at keeping it uh, moist using the rotisserie uh, method. And now we're going to continue on and make sure that this is the most delicious bird you could ever have. So leave this under a loose foil tent. You don't want to um, harbor a bunch of moisture in here uh, that's going to keep the skin from being nice and crispy the way it is. So just loosely let that sit for at least five, ten minutes before you even try and get it off the spit. So finishing up my potatoes, we'll be ready to eat. Woo! All right, this turkey's been sitting for a good 15 minutes. It has cooled down quite a bit. 
and so has the rotisserie gear. So I need to get it off of here. You might need some pliers. So I used some pliers earlier to tighten it up and now I'm going to have to use them again to um, loosen them up. So that's easy. Easy peasy. Loosen those clamps. So slide it off as best you can. So I'm just going to kind of tap this and loosen the rotisserie, the clamps because there we go. That's all it needed. It just kind of cooked on there. So remove the spit. I'm going to cut this, the strings off. If you find a problem with your turkey just not um, rotating properly, just go ahead and tie the string right to the spit or these clamps. Ugh. Everything is nice and loose. All right, be gentle with her because her skin is beautiful. We're disassembling, we're getting there. All right, clamps out. This is gonna be easy to break down. All right, so here she is. Oh boy, look at this turkey. Unreal. So moist, you can just see it. It's very nice and loose. You can tell the joints are nice and loose. That's how you also know that it's done, especially if you don't have a digital thermometer or any other kind of thermometer. So you're just gonna start disassembling and I'm gonna start right here with the drumstick and the thigh. And you'll see me after I have this all broken down. But in the meantime, I'm gonna steal a little piece of meat because I can just get a little bit of this meat. It is moist and it's dripping juice. I mean, really, absolutely fantastic. Look at that. The breast meat is my favorite. Mm. Outstanding, smoky, savory. Oh, it's so smoky. Mm. That is unreal. Very worthy of a birthday feast. Let me get a little bit of the skin too. It's so good. You're going to love this one. All right. You'll see me in a minute. All right. We've cut a lot of the meat off, but we still have a lot still on the carcass. So I'm just going to cover that up while we eat. We'll put that away later. Pick that through and uh, get all the meat off, put it in the refrigerator, and you can have some fantastic leftovers tomorrow. Also, don't get rid of your carcass because your carcass can be frozen after all the meat is removed. Freeze it and use it next time you want to make a beautiful, flavorful stock, soup, or stew. Okay? So off this goes. And here's our gorgeous platter. Birthday turkey. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Garnish with a little bit of holly if you have it. And you have a great Christmas in July. What did you think of the meat, Mom? Oh, Kim, it was delicious. You like it? Oh, I loved it. It's moist. It's tender. It's juicy. It is so flavorful. It has crazy amounts of smoky flavor and delicious things going on here. So that's how you do it. That's how you grill a whole turkey on a spit or a rotisserie on your grill. It's not that hard. It takes a couple hours, no problem. Um, but it's, it's well worth it. It is delicious. It keeps things nice and moist. And it's, you know what, you don't have to babysit it much. I only went out there maybe once every hour to check on it, just to make sure that all was well and things weren't burning and etc. right? So we are really excited to eat this. I'm gonna grab one more little piece. Mmm. Mmm. That is good. Mmm. Mmm. That tastes like the smoked turkey legs that they do down south, like in Texas. Mmm. Barbecue turkey legs. That's what that tastes like. It's delicious. My goodness. Mmm. Now, if you want to really kick it up another notch, you could have brined this turkey last night and it would be even juicier. I don't know how it could be any juicier, but it would be even juicier and a lot of flavor would be going on here. Anyhow, that's how you do it. I hope you try it too. You're going to love it. Christmas in July. Why not? Sounds like a fun event, doesn't it? That's it. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly, youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly. You can find my channel on Roku Cooking with Kimberly, and I'm also syndicated on Apple TV and Amazon, etc. Come to my website, cookingwithkimberly.com, subscribe, interact with us, and let us know what's going down in your culinary world, all right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye! Yum!